Hi everyone, it's Mike from BPM and for our second video of uh, series Pipe with Mike I've decided to talk about some tips for buying an estate pipe online. So, first, um, if you have an opportunity or possibility to visit a brick and mortar shop, which thankfully still exists, uh, please do so. The whole experience is simply fantastic and it brings you so much in every possible way. So before, you know, before thinking about buying online, if there's a the possibility to visit the local shop or some regional shop or anything reachable to you, please do so. But if you have decided to buy a pipe online um, and you, you want to go for an estate pipe for any reason uh, possible, you want to go with some cheaper option, you want to you want a pipe that's maybe no longer in production or simply you're looking for something that's not available uh, in that form as a brand new pipe. If you want to go that way uh, and I'm guessing that a huge percentage of pipes sold today or bought or sold uh, happens over internet so it's sort of inevitable to do so. So I just want to share some steps or tips uh, because it can be a horrible experience or it can be a fantastic experience. Uh, uh, it all depends but you can at least narrow that possibility for um, bad experience um, at least a bit you know hopefully these tips will help you uh, lower that gap or possibility to get a bad bad pipe so uh, first pipe uh, first step would be to um, I wrote you already know what you want so it's important to make a decision you can go by a feeling you know you just go on eBay and browse for for different pipes but it makes things a lot easier to just set some basic rules uh, regarding shape, finish, brand, um, size and stuff like that. Uh, so that would be a first basic step. Mm. If you have already uh, you have a pipe in mind or something you would like, uh, second step would be to if possible research that pipe. So let's say for an example you want a billiard uh, in smooth finish bigger size or let's say medium size never mind research the brand research the shape itself which blends uh, smoke better from from that sort of uh, shape you are gonna test it yourself when you take a blend and um, if you have already a collection of pipes different sh shapes and sizes you're gonna test it out and you're gonna find perfect match and maybe uh, connect that pipe a certain pipe to a certain blend and just enjoy it always from the same pipe which I believe most smokers do or pipe enthusiasts but uh, you know some blends uh, will smoke better usually from some uh, shapes so just do your research third step is kind of uh, connected to the second step. If it's not possible to research it, use the logic to determine quality. Uh, this would mean um, is uh, if it's a smooth finish, uh, what kind of grain does it have? Is it uh, what kind of briar is used or was used to make the pipe? Um, is stem made of good quality vulcanite or acrylic uh, material? Um, researching and having some sort of pointers will, will really help you uh, find more info about that pipe. Was it placed on lower end quality pipes or somewhere in the medium range or uh, it's a, if it's a higher range pipe um, you will know what to expect if you have for example a Savinelli pipe and you get some cheaper series you know you can expect lower quality with those it's when I say lower quality they're not usually gonna smoke bad uh, quite the opposite but um, you can simply expect better experience with more expensive pipes so you know it would be some pointers or, or simple logic to see if it's a, a sandblasted finish does it have really nice 
dense ring grain uh, or is it just you know all around the pipe um, stuff like that uh, how does the stain look is it worn off and um, some basic logic uh, around these um, ground uh, things regarding the shape and size and everything so step number four or tip number four would be basic seller info and photos uh, pretty self-explanatory uh, first step when dealing with someone would be to read reviews let's take eBay for example uh, it's it's easy to go into reviews and see what kind of experience people had or customers had so far with certain seller uh, it's gonna give you an idea what to expect did people have good experience with this seller is he an honest seller uh, was everything okay with the transaction and stuff like that so just don't don't hesitate to spend a couple of minutes to go through some recent reviews or read a bit more just to get a feeling of what to expect from this seller photos as you know uh, if you take my example and uh, ppm uh, i really do like i just like i i think it's a must to uh, represent an object pipe in this case um represent it fairly uh, uh, from all angles use at least some decent lighting setup and um, take crisp and clear photos from all angles so uh, when someone comes up and wants to buy something you they can go through photo after photo and just uh, see everything in nice detail it's pretty uh, unusual for me um, that even today when people are selling estate pipes most of photography uh, pretty much sucks so um, don't, don't, I don't really understand why uh, people don't want to invest some effort into better photography but no that's okay uh, some people like myself are gonna make video presentations which is a rare case to be honest but those are even better because you know exactly what to expect so check sellers reputation read some info read the description they wrote and just don't don't rush through the listing go careful step by step and just dedicate your time five minutes better five minutes now than regretting later because you bought it if it's a hassle to return it or anything like that just read through everything and look carefully at the photos so uh tip number five uh, we're now we're going to specifics would be condition of stem and stumble so when we are talking about stem i'm gonna since these are uh, estate pipes i'm gonna talk about vulcanite which oxidizes and you're gonna come across vulcanite more often than acrylic uh, mount pieces they don't ox oxidize but i'm gonna uh, touch on some issues possible issues possible issues with acrylic stems as well which is uh, mutual with vulcanite stems so uh, first thing uh, with an estate pipe and we're talking about unrestored estate pipes uh, if they're restored check for these this stuff but uh, prefer um, but usually you're gonna come across poorly restored or unrestored uh, pieces stem can be oxidized uh, a lot um, thing with that is that oxidation can sometimes uh, cover uh, cracks bite marks crack lines splits a lot of stuff so if you're buying something that's heavily oxidized don't be surprised if under oxidation there are some sort of damages inside of stem uh, worst case scenario is that something is jammed inside the tunnel uh, that happens believe it or not and it's sometimes extremely hard to remove the obstacle it can be a simple piece of cleaner that's stuck right in the middle 
of stem, but sometimes it can be other stuff. Um, also, the inside, especially this pipe isn't filtered, uh, so if you, it's a filtered pipe, there's the wider tenon uh, tunnel, tunnel and uh, the, uh, the rest. Um, it can be uh, layered with years and years of, uh, well, uh, <laughs> all kinds of stuff, uh, saliva, um, tobacco and everything in between. So people, some people really don't pay that much attention uh, about their pipes and they just smoke them as much as they can and when they get jammed or smell too bad they just ditch them and go to the next one so not even some basic cleaning is included so uh, it's a it's a stupid thing but you can come across that situation quite often um, those would be some possible damages uh, if they're if it's not that oxidized and now we're talking even about acrylic uh, stems uh, check for bite marks check for cracks crack lines, um, splits, those are all things that need to be taken care of or else you're going to have problems consuming the pipe. Uh, bite marks can be shallow, quite shallow sometimes and they can be removed uh, while uh, in the process of restoration because you can send your pipe or uh, stem <coughs> only for restoration. Sometimes they can be evened out uh, with simple sanding, but uh, if they're stronger, if you sand too much, you risk of damaging, penetrating uh, a side of stem and creating a hole or uh, just chipping off a part. So uh, these are quite uh, important things. Uh, you know, also logos can be faded, lo that can be fixed easily if it's not uh, sanded down. Uh, just look for everything, uh, look at the whole piece and look, it should be nice, flat and shiny, but that doesn't need to be the case. When we're talking about the stummel, uh, let's start from chamber and rim. So chamber would be the most critical thing on pipe and most important part. Uh, first, uh, don't be surprised if some pipes have uh, very very thick layers uh, of charring inside. Um, sometimes uh, they are completely covered in it so you can't even put your small finger inside there because um, because of all the charring inside uh, the, the cake that's built up. Uh, if possible, look for a pipe that has light uh, layer of cake or uh, where cake was as much as possible uh, gently removed because if, when you're removing cake you can damage chamber walls but if you're careful you can just remove the cake if you use some uh, some sort of uh, bat cleaning bat or something like that with salt and alcohol um, it can make things easier uh, just so not everything is dried up and really uh, firm inside um, look for as well, of course obviously condition of chamber walls uh, now it can have serious cracks or it can have possibly some smaller, lighter, uh, shallower heat cracks. Now heat cracks are not as dangerous as some stronger damages or stronger splits because uh, once you recoat the bowl it's gonna fill those heat cracks and uh, give them additional support and structure and as you smoke the pipe and create um, a level of cake, nice and even level of cake, it's gonna uh, insulate that part and um, prevent any further uh, crack inside. But the smoother the better, of course. Um, 
again ask the seller and get any possible info on that uh, on cham chamber condition also chamber of course uh, if uh, someone smokes all kinds of tobacco or some really really strong smelling tobacco uh, ghosting can be horrible so also ask around for possible ghosting uh, if seller doesn't says he doesn't know just ask him to sniff the chamber and see for himself uh, ghosting can be removed with salt and alcohol usually sometimes one bath of salt sometimes multiple uh, but uh, it can be the case rim so if you overfill the pipe when you're smoking and you sort of lean it toward some side uh, or when you're relighting the, the tobacco inside if it's windy or you're just not careful or you have a lighter that throws strong large flame uh, you can uh, darken the rim or you can even burn the rim so again see the structure if it is it flat if it's a beveled edge is it nice and even on all sides uh, is it darkened or you can see the clear matching stain sometimes stain can be a bit different a shade or two different from the rest uh, maybe it's just because of um, over time you're gonna clean the rim much often than everything else so it can change the color a bit it's not alarming but um, for sure um, you can see clearly signs of, of heavier use or uh, you know negligent uh, behavior with that pipe so uh, moving along the shank and inside obviously if it's possible ask for a seller to uh, make a photo of in inside they can just use a small lamp which is pointed through chamber so you can see better inside is the is the whole uh, channel clean uh, is there a lot of filth or um, just simply layers of tobacco residue on uh, walls um, just check the condition of that ask around again ghosting can be present but that can be cleaned it's a lot of people a lot of professional resources they do clean uh, the inside of shank but uh, it's just uh, not always the case to clean it thoroughly and um, really getting everything out of there so be careful with that too it can lead to uh, consuming a lot of uh, pipe cleaners or uh, anything you use for cleaning this part especially if you don't have any tools uh, it can be a bit frustrating to clean it if you buy it very dirty or uh, at least uh, worst possible scenario you know completely plugged and uh, with hard layers of uh, residue from, from smoking um, on the outside of the uh, whole stumble obviously uh, it's gonna be a different finish on, on, on different pipes if we are talking about smooth finish uh, first uh, you can see if there are any fills factory fills uh, sometimes factory fills very rarely can be um, a bad thing if they were done unprofessionally or if they're too large uh, usually they are used to cover small surface imperfections these can be found on edges or sides or shank anywhere uh, they're used to cover uh, small pieces where some maybe nods were or some lines or stuff like that uh, so obviously scuffing scratching dents knocks uh, any sign of wear uh, is going to be visible especially on smooth finish uh, if it's a sandblasted finish or rusticated finish have a close look this is this is where those photos really come um, as important uh, really have a good look around the whole stumble just to see if there's if there's something that's you know 
if it's a fill on rusticated finish it's going to look different in color uh, or even sandblasted finish but on smooth finish you're gonna be able to see better if there are small signs some usual small micro uh, scratches or scuffing or dents or if there are some big dents uh, or cracks or stuff like that watch the edges of shank watch the edges of rim inside and outside um, just have a good look you know take your time and have a good look if you found something you like and uh, make sure there are no splits or cracks or uh, stronger damages also stamping on pipe uh, from holding it depends depending on the shape can get faded some people find it annoying others don't uh, if it's a piece collectible piece uh, which is a more expensive pipe of course uh, visible stamping is going to be very important but if it's something you're going to use to smoke and enjoy it uh, obviously it's not a critical issue if it has faded a bit or some part of it has faded bear in mind that if stamping is entirely faded uh, someone probably uh, sand it down the whole pipe uh, people sometimes use this they say okay we had some dents or scratches so I decided to send down the whole stummel uh, redo the stain and uh, just uh, make everything look as new again I personally or we avoid doing this at basically all costs simply because that's not a restoration process when you're restoring something you are doing everything you can to get it as close as possible to its original condition you don't want to remake the whole thing you want to restore it you know uh, and preserving some signs really gives some signs of, signs of wear gives the pipe a character it shows it was used for decades sometimes but was taken care of and it has probably seen all kinds of stuff you know you, you know you're inheriting something um, that, uh, that was of great value to someone and uh, if he respected that pipe really uh, it would be sad to remove all those traces and just you know make it brand new um, also if you do that you're removing you can always remove more but you can never add when it comes to sanding so really you're making the pipe thinner and just not really going into the right direction with uh, sanding down everything and removing stamping so we can move to the next step I don't think I forgot anything here but I have a strong feeling as I'm doing this video and uh, talking about this I just realized uh, actually how big of a subject this is so it's probably gonna be a long video but what can I do and it's probably gonna have a part two I just I'm just sensing it uh, step number five uh, step number six would be research what is a fair price we're gonna be quick about this one you can uh, simply do a Google search uh, go through completed listings on eBay uh, visit some websites that give uh, price information or simply go through Google search and see if you uh, search for a downhill uh, it's gonna give you some results uh, when pipe like that or similar pipe or from similar series uh, same series or similar shape was sold uh, in you know sometime in the past what was its price so figure do some research use multiple sources ask some friend uh, ask someone who deals with pipes uh, why not I would uh, always help if you ask me uh, I already did that so just ask someone for some you know range of value just to have an idea you don't want to pay $300 for a pipe that's worth $50 that's it happens don't think it doesn't happen because people sometimes without experience see something that looks great but it's way overpriced they pay the money and unfortunately later on they find out find out that um, they bought something and overpaid it um, 
wildly overpaid it. So um, moving on to the number seven, which would be buy with, ins with insurance if possible. Again, uh, I'm not gonna dwell on this a, a lot. Uh, you have some sort of buyer protection on eBay, on Etsy and on other sites. I think there is one on Etsy. Also payment um, on, on PayPal is protected uh, as well. So if possible, choose a place to buy it or a method of paying, which will give you some sort of protection. Uh, you want to protect your payment as much as possible, of course, and uh, some sort of insurance is always welcomed. Plus, if a seller uh, goes into the direction of giving some sort of insurance and, and covering uh, and covers the cost or everything uh, or accepts a return, it's a sign of goodwill and it's a step in the right direction of creating some sort of uh, a trusted cooperation, you know. Um, number eight, so you bought the pipe, you paid it and you received the package. Of course, before uh, sending uh, this seller, every seller should notice, uh, detach your stem, pack it separately and for the love of God, protect it properly. Um, just this is a mid step between numbers uh, seven and eight. Just want to touch on this subject uh, for a bit. So, uh, postal workers or uh, people dealing with packages unfortunately are n not very careful with them usually. So, uh, protecting everything in bubble wrap, in hard cardboard, or something like that, whichever you use. Uh, you use it's very very important you, you don't want a pipe to be broken when someone receives it so detach it pack it separately it's quite simple uh, so you got the pipe hopefully it came in one piece I mean uh, as a whole sit down take your pipe uh, under some light uh, uh, don't let your wife di distract you with talk sit down and inspect the pipe is everything the way it was described so you went slowly you judged everything you, you went through every little detail uh, you used logic um, and you got what or you decided to buy something which was described on that particular way does everything match the description or does it meet your expectations it doesn't have to be a restored pipe. You might have chosen to buy a pipe in unrestored condition, but still, does it match everything that you expected or uh, that you believed to be when uh, it arrives to you? Uh, go through every little detail inside, outside, uh, edges, uh, chamber, shank, just check everything. Um, Step number nine or tip number nine would be basic or detailed cleaning. Uh, basic obviously is if it's in some sort of restored condition. Uh, detailed cleaning, sanitizing, uh, buffing uh, if it's uh, in unrestored condition or if you can do it or give it to someone who does restoration uh, as a hobby or for uh, work. Um, even um, we sell our pipes in ready to smoke condition. Uh, I will always do at least some sort of basic cleaning. Um, if someone is a trusted seller, like we are, uh, you can rely on that. But uh, even then, if you see that the package was uh, sort of damaged, that might mean that it was opened on customs for some sort of, you know, surprise inspection or as a regular inspection. You might want to use at least water to clean uh, stuff that goes into your mouth, the stem, the mouthpiece. Uh, just run, run a cleaner through the pipe, blow out air from it, just small things if those are needed. 
but if you're restoring it, uh, do properly clean it because you're gonna inhale or at least taste the tobacco, you're gonna put it in your mouth and really um, determine the level of um, cleaning that it requires none to extreme and don't rush you know with wanting to try the pipe just clean it nice and easy and prepare it nicely for consumption and finally tip number 10 would be take care of your pipe and enjoy it uh, taking care of your pipe uh, watch youtube videos ask a friend there are many many tutorials on some uh, basic and regular maintenance of your pipe uh, after every smoke once a month or some maybe a uh, super deep cleaning session uh, once uh, in a longer period of time uh, smoke it like a normal person don't be <laughs> the person who burns through his pipes uh, be responsible with it if you're taking it outside uh, wear a case uh, just be careful with your pipes uh, a pipe is an exceptional creation by by men and um, it's no matter which pipe you have it's it's always going to be worthy of admiration especially if it's an older piece it it's going to have history with it uh, it's going to have its own character and simply you know treat it like you would not gonna say a child or a family member, I don't wanna sound twisted, but <laughs> just take good care of it. Um, uh, it, it, might be, it might be a present that your wife got you or someone else, some family member or some... Uh, it might remind you of some date, some birthday or any other occasion. So just, you know, try to savor it and uh, maybe even save it for next generation so just take good normal care of it uh, smoke it like a normal person don't chug on it uh, clean it regularly and just uh, make sure it lasts uh, enjoy it enjoy your pipe try different blends from your pipe uh, try even with one blend try packing it differently um, <clears throat> go through whole process of enjoyment uh, smoke the pipe yourself in moments of solitude, smoke the pipe with some best buddy, uh, go to a meeting of uh, some pipe club, you know, hang out, meet new people, uh, smoke it in a company of 20 people, you know, it, it's also a different experience when everyone's smoking a pipe and smoke is all around you and uh, every, every blend mixes and stuff like that, there's always noise, there's, there's always uh, a lot of topics it's really really fun to be around pipe smokers um, as the old uh, motto of Peterson's original Peterson's was a thinking man's pipe you really uh, hardly come across a pipe smoker who is a man of uh, no words or man who's empty if I can say it like that uh, you're always gonna find someone uh, interesting uh, and uh, with a story to tell uh, when it comes to pipe smokers um, <clears throat> and uh, also th those are all topics for some future videos for now I hope that these steps uh, helped you uh, I really uh, didn't want to go through a lot of details in every step because that video would be probably a couple of hours long um, I'm gonna try to make some video about uh, restoration so sh show at least uh, some before and after results maybe or do some topic uh, general topic about some stuff um, but that's all for a uh, future video for now, uh, thank you all for watching, I hope this video helps someone, uh, have a great day and take care.